One of the most powerful things that you can do in selling is to disqualify prospects. To disqualify, not qualify, to disqualify prospects. Because the faster that you end conversations with bad prospects who are just not a fit, who are never going to work with you, hire you, whatever, well, the faster you do that, the more time that you have for conversations with great prospects who are a perfect fit and who will give you a ton of money. And so today we're going to talk about Perry Marshall's five power disqualifiers from 8020 sales and marketing. And hey, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get more content like this. Let's dive in. These are the proven direct response, marketing, copywriting, and entrepreneurship success strategies you can use today to write your own ticket and create the life you want. I am Roy Furr, and this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Now, here's today's breakthrough. All right, this is going to be one of those rare episodes that has a double sponsor. Um, the first, since we're talking about the book, 8020 Sales and Marketing from Perry Marshall. I'm an affiliate only because... I love his work. Perry is a longtime client, friend, like somebody who I really respect in the marketing space. And this is a great book. I'll include a link in the description for you to check it out since we're talking about content from the book. The second sponsor is my Launch Your Client Business free mini course. If you want to be able to have conversations with prospects that turn into sales, that Launch Your Client Business free mini course, the second link in the description, is a great way to do that. So look for the Launch Your Client Business free mini course, and that goes deep into all the things you need to do, including how to get prospects on the phone so you can have conversations with them and make an offer, get some money. <laughs> All right, so let's dive in. Of uh, Perry Marshall's five power disqualifiers, they're 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 from this book, 8020 Sales and Marketing, right? Um, I actually also I was talking to Perry recently, and I looked up and I realized that I also have them on my wall. I have them on my wall right next to my Clayton Makepeace checklist, my poster from Clayton Makepeace that I use to write my first multi-million dollar copywriting promotions, right? So like. They hold a place of honor. The cheat sheet from 8020 Sales and Marketing holds a place of honor alongside that Clayton Makepeace poster. Uh, Perry's a friend and client. Uh, I've done lots of copy reviews with him where I'm reviewing his copy before he puts it out. And honestly, he's one of my favorite thinkers in business. I really respect people who are doing a lot of thinking and not just, you know, copying marketing systems, whatever. It's what I'm drawn to. Um, and Perry is definitely up there. And one of the things that he focuses on is, you know, if you're if you're going to eighty twenty, if you're going to recognize that, you know, twenty percent of my prospects are going to generate eighty percent of my sales or whatever, you want to focus as quickly as possible on who those are and spend as much time as possible with those people, as opposed to spending a bunch of time with everybody equally. And one of the great ways that you do that. One of the great ways that you do that is with the power disqualifiers, his five power disqualifiers. Another thing that you do, and this is part of why I wanted to mention the Launch Your Client Business mini course, is if you are disqualifying prospects before you're even reaching out to them, if you're doing proactive uh, manual prospecting, well, then you're doing a smart thing. The more that you can do, and I see this with Perry's stuff, the more that you can do to disqualify people. Um, and make sure that the people who get to you are the most qualified, the easier your life is going to be. And the more you're going to work with people who you really feel a connection to. All right, so let's dive into the five power disqualifiers. And these, these are just questions that you can ask about your prospect that are going to help you figure out if, if this person is likely to do business with me or not. So disqualifier number one, do they have the money? Do they have the money? Uh, I'm actually moving forward with a very big project this week. Uh, and one of the things about this project that very quickly and easily made it a big project was because um, this client has been very successful with his offer in the past. So they have a lot of money to reinvest in the offer. And the type of copy I feel very confident that I can help them with. Um, so there's all the other stuff too, right? But this number one thing do they have the money? Like so many times, if you are, if you're trying to deal with a prospect that doesn't have any money and you're trying to, I don't know, make a high ticket offer to them or uh, it, it just doesn't work. So one of the things that you need to figure out through the course of the sales process is 
does this person have the money to invest? So for example, my uh, copy mentor, copywriter coaching that I do, uh, one of the things about that, like um, I, I ask on the application, if you were going to make a $10,000 investment in your business, where would that money come from? And that tells me whether or not the person has the money. So I make that a required question. And if you're filling out the application, you have to answer that. And I can tell a big difference between the people who are going to invest in my services in a financially responsible way and that have the money and the capability to invest versus somebody who's just like, I want to do this, but I don't have the money to do it. Um, because, yeah, it's important to know that ahead of time. And so I could spend hours, I could spend a lot of time over the next days, weeks, months trying to close someone who doesn't have the money. But most of the time, I know even before I get on my first phone call with someone, and usually the first phone call is only about 15 minutes, I know before I get on the first phone call with them if they are able to invest. I always try to provide as much value on that phone call regardless, but it's nice to know. It's nice to know. Um, because a lot of people who would pursue an opportunity like that don't have the money. And it's good to know, right? It's, it's good to know and give them the best advice based on where they are at. Perry Marshall's power disqualifier number two. Do they have a bleeding neck? A bleeding neck. Um, by that, he means do they have like a desperate need for your product, your service? If somebody has a bleeding neck, right, they need... They need that, that, that wound to be fixed as quick as possible because otherwise they're going to bleed out, right? Um, and that type of person doesn't ask how much the emergency room stay is going to cost. They just go to the emergency room. And so somebody that has that type of extremely urgent problem, um, you know, I'm, hoping, I'm not telling you to focus on, on the medical market, by the way. That's not literal, right? Um, but the type of person that has that type of, extremely urgent problem that they want to have solved and they know needs to be solved right away, well, that person is way more likely to do business with you ASAP versus someone who's like, oh yeah, that's a problem that I'd maybe like to solve at some point, right? Like, okay, great. <laughs> How about this? Power disqualifier number three, do they buy into your unique selling proposition? So you have some level of unique selling proposition, something that makes you unique, something that makes you um, stand out, something that means that you will be able to provide them the desired result. Using the Dan Kennedy question, why should I, your perfect prospect, choose to do business with you over every other option available to me in the marketplace, including uh, going with a competitor, solving the, problem with my, uh, solving the problem myself, or doing nothing? So why should I choose you over every other option available to me? Do they believe your answer to that question? Number one, you have to have a good answer to that question. But number two, you ask, do they believe that? Does somebody believe they should do business with me to, I don't know, uh, develop a, a funnel? Do, do they believe they should do business with me to learn copywriting? Do they believe they should do business with me for whatever reason, right? Do they buy into your unique selling proposition? And if they do, great. <laughs> if they don't, they are disqualified. Now, this is one, like, you can't necessarily fix do they have the money. Okay, yeah, some people, like, try to get people on credit and all of that, but that's not something I'm interested in. You can't necessarily fix do they have a bleeding neck, right? But do they buy into your unique selling proposition? That is something that you can address, uh, number one, by the development of your unique selling proposition, and number two, by your communication of that unique selling proposition. And if you do that effectively then you may actually turn people who were disqualified into qualified. But I would only do that as long as the other ones are, you know, moving forward. How about this? Disqualifier number four, power disqualifier. Do they have the ability to say yes? Do they have the ability to say yes? If they have the ability to say yes, great. They're a qualified prospect. If they don't, if they have to like loop in some additional decision makers, if it's a committee decision, if they have to talk to their spouse, if they... All of those things are going to limit their ability to say yes. And if they don't have the ability to say yes, they may not be that good of a prospect for you. So you have to consider that and you have to work that into what you're doing. If they have the ability to say yes, that's, that's the type of person who can say yes. If they, if they can't, I, I mean, 
Is it obvious? Is it obvious? If they can't say yes, they can't say yes. They're not that great of a prospect. And so you can ask questions like that, or you can listen to clues about this and figure out, okay, are there more people who have to be involved in this decision? And then, by the way, if there are additional people who have to be involved in the decision, you have to consider these five power disqualifiers across every single decision-making party, every single person involved in that decision. And then disqualifier number five, power disqualifier number five, does what you sell fit into their overall plans? Does what you sell fit into their overall plan? So this is, this is, uh, man, I've dealt with this where like, I've been excited as a copywriter by the startup movement, the startup, whatever, the startup, whatever you want to call it, um, culture in the United States. And all these people who are like, we're going to start businesses, we're going to become entrepreneurs, all of that. And even if direct response marketing and the type of marketing that I'm able to do well is a good fit for their industry, their market, their audience, whatever, if, even if I could generate those results, if they don't plan to use direct response style advertising and marketing, mm, my stuff doesn't fit their plans. And it's not necessarily going to be good. And they're not going to value what I do in a way that somebody, um, you know, if, it's a big project that I'm, that I'm starting up. Um, <laughs> they, they came to me and said, hey, this is what we want to do. And it was actually a method that I had taught before in terms of the exact structure of the campaign. And so what I'm able to do fit their overall plans perfectly. And it was easy for me to say, yes, it's actually a fit. And then it was easy for them to say, yes, that's great. Let's move forward. And so if you have a more perfect fit, you have a more perfect prospect. If you have a misfit, you have a misfit prospect. <laughs> or maybe you're the misfit. Either way, um, it's not a fit between you and the prospect. And you need to disqualify them. And remember, we're doing all of this, number one, because we want to make sure that we're talking to the people who are most likely to actually become a client or customer. Number two, we're doing this, uh, we're doing this in a way that is persuasive because the more of these that we can tick off, like, you know, do you have the money? Do you have the money? Um, yeah, have the money to invest in this. Is this something that you want to, that you need to fix right away? Like that you need the solution to right away? That they have a bleeding neck. Okay, yes, right? And there's all these no's that they didn't say. Do you buy into my unique selling proposition, my ability to uniquely serve you in serving this, in, in solving this problem? Yeah, yeah, we think that you can do it. And we think that you're the person for it. And you're the person who has the ability to say yes? Absolutely. I am the person who says, I'm the person who makes the final decision here, right? And does this fit your overall plans? Yeah, uh, that's what I was planning to do. It's a perfect fit. Yes, awesome. So all the no's that they did not say means that the yes, the yes is just all the stronger. So if you're afraid of that no, and so you won't go to get the yes, well, then you're not adding these yeses on top of each other to the point where they're just like, yes, 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 yes. And then when you ask them for money, they say, yes, here you go. So that's the power of these five power disqualifiers. And they are absolutely, absolutely worth internalizing in your sales thinking, whether you're you know, selling whatever context you're selling, uh, including selling your own products and services. Uh, and especially if you are doing a client business and you are connecting with clients and you're having these consultative selling conversations, these are absolutely worth keeping in mind. So I'm Roy Fur. This is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can get more content like this delivered to you. Remember, there is a link in the description to Perry Marshall's 80-20 sales and marketing book. It's an affiliate link, so I get a little bit of money if you click it. But listen, if you don't want to, if you don't want me to get money um, by clicking that link and then actually buying, because actually I said I get money when you click it, but it's actually only when you buy it. If you don't want me to get money, just go buy it at Amazon because it is a great book and the thinking in it is absolutely sound in terms of increasing your sales and marketing results. Uh, so that link is in the description. Oh, and when you do click on my link, uh, Perry actually has an offer where you pay like a penny plus shipping. So it's cheaper than Amazon too. 
Um, and also, if you are interested in launching your client business and getting client prospects on the phone, don't forget to uh, check the link for the Launch Your Client Business free mini course that I offer. That's for me, right? So I get paid all the money if you buy through uh, the offer that's at the end of that mini course. But um, either way, you're getting a ton of value by engaging with even the free content there. So I'm Roy Fur. Uh, this is Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. And hey, every day and every episode, I'm here trying to help you get better results with your marketing, your copywriting, your business building. I'm helping you achieve breakthroughs and marketing genius. And I will catch you again in the next episode. See you soon. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.